So I made several videos about the TSP back in April, and I didn't think they were going to be one of the most viewed videos on my channel. I've made my mistakes with TSP in the past that cost me over $20,000 when I was on active duty in the military. And if I could go back in time, I would have done things differently, but I can't think about that now. What I want to focus on is now and how I'm going to maximize my retirement savings to achieve financial independence and retire early. It is entirely possible to become a TSP millionaire like this person named Silver Al Thrifter who commented on one of my videos and she said, happy to be a TSP millionaire. She listened to her mom and dollar cost average 100% CSNI, mostly C funds until last year. Now she's getting close to retirement and she's going to move about 30% to the G fund. She will let the rest sit and keep growing. She maxed out her investments for 20 years. That's incredible and congratulations to her. And when I made this video, 113,000 TSP investors were members of the TSP Millionaire Club. And as of September 2022, there are 65,500 TSP millionaires, which is a significant drop from 113,000. And this is according to the latest report from the Federal Retirement Thrift Investment Board or FRTIB. This is due to pretty much all the funds being down for 2022. The C fund is down 13% year to date. S fund is down 21%. The I fund is down 12% and F fund is down 12%. The only one that is up is the G fund or the short term US Treasury uh, securities. And I just call it government bonds because the US government guarantees the payments of principal and interest. So if you had CS and I funds, you'd be down on average 15% year to date, depending on your allocation. If you had a million dollars and you had money evenly distributed across CS and I funds, then you'd be down about 15% or your current balance would be about $850,000. So it makes sense that given the condition of the current stock market, most of those seven figure TSP investors are no longer in the seven figure club. And my plan is to max out my TSP every year regardless of what's going on in the stock market. And starting in 2023, the maximum contribution limit is going to be $22,500 or $30,000 if you're 50 or older. This is not counting the 5% employer match that I'm gonna get in the TSP. And before I go any further in this video, I wanna make sure you understand that this is not in any form of financial advice. And I'm never gonna tell you what to do with your investments. You should never listen to any YouTubers to invest or not invest in something like putting money in FTX. I gotta tell you that TSP is probably by far the best employer sponsored plan after comparing it to multiple 401ks in the private sector. And I've been in both the private and public sectors for the last 20 years. My stock allocation has been and always be the same. And it'll be 100% stocks and 0% bonds. And I'm not looking to touch my TSP until I turn 59 and a half. And this is not going to be the only investment account I'm going to have during my retirement. And I'll have my Roth IRA, traditional IRA, HSA, taxable investment accounts, real estate, and business. For the last seven years, I have been working on diversifying my income streams. So I don't just rely on my 401k, TSP, or Roth IRA. But if TSP were my only retirement account, then I would use what's called the rule of 120. Basically, it'll be subtracting my age from 120 to allocate my stock portfolio properly. And if I'm 30 years old, then it would be 90% stocks and 10% bonds because 120 minus 30 is 90, right? If I'm 35 years old, then it will be 85% stocks and 15% bonds. I'm not using the rule of 120 because I have enough liquidity to mitigate my risks and exposure to the equity market. My net worth statement is diversified enough not to allow me to expose too much to the stock market. And within my stock allocation at 100%, I only invest in C and S funds. Again, this is what I'm doing and you shouldn't do it just because I'm doing it. The C fund is basically the S&P 500 index fund, like the Vanguard S&P 500 index fund, uh, VFIAX, Fidelity 500 index fund, FXAIX, or the Schwab S&P 500 index fund, SWPPX. The S fund is a small cap stock index fund that matches the performance 
of the Dow Jones US Completion Total Stock Market Index. The S fund is much riskier than C fund because it tracks small and medium sized US companies that are much more volatile than the large cap companies. Their top 10 holdings are Blackstone, Snowflake, Uber, Block, Airbnb, and Snap, which are down significantly this year. Blackstone is down 38%, Snowflake is down 58%, Uber is down 40%, Block is down 62%, and Snap is down almost 80% year to date. Higher the risks, higher the rewards or losses, right? At my age, I'm very risk tolerant, so I am okay with being exposed to the S fund. If I'm close to my retirement age, then I will be more comfortable with just putting my money in the C fund. The C fund, on the other hand, also got hammered in 2022. But to me, it's very unlikely to see companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and Tesla go bankrupt, right? If you ask me where Apple is gonna be in the next 20 years, I would say they're gonna be making an iPhone that we can probably put inside our arms or something like that, right? I'd rather invest in US companies for the long term. And I don't invest in any of the iPhone because it has severely underperformed for the last 10 years with just a 5.56% average annual return. It's performed a 2.63% average annual return for the last five years, which is barely above the performance of G Fund. I know some of you will tell me in the comment section down below that I should diversify with an international index fund. Still, I just don't see any upside for the next 10 to 20 years. So I'm gonna keep my TSP allocation to just 50% C fund and 50% S fund for the year 2023. And if you need help with your personal finances, like creating a budget or savings to achieve your financial independence, you can schedule a free one-on-one 20 minute financial coaching session by visiting firesession.com coaching. And now I wanna show you my TSP calculator with the balance that I have so far. And I started investing in my TSP in January, 2022. And before that, it was all in my 401k with a private company before I quit that job. I'm gonna show you two separate tabs. One is in traditional and the other one is in Roth. Because I contribute at least 5% to my TSP, my employer contributes 5% of my salary. Whatever my employer contributes will go to the traditional portion of my TSP. Because I dollar cost average my contributions every two weeks, I have actually gained about 3% in earnings this year. If you've been holding on to your TSP for a while, then your total fund is most likely down by 8 to 10% at the minimum. I guess you could say that I got lucky, right? And this is from 50% C fund and 50% S fund. So let's say the contribution limit increases by $500 every year starting in 2024 at $23,000. By age 45, I should have pretty close to $428,000 in the year 2032 with an 8% average annual return. The C fund has performed 13% in annualized return for the last 10 years. Then I would have about $481,000 at age 45. And when I retire early at age 45 and I just leave the money where it is in the TSP with a 10% average annual return, I'm looking at $1.8 million by the time I turn 59 and a half. And if for some reason I choose to work until age 50, I could retire with $966,000 in the year 2037. And that money will grow to $2.2 million by the time I turn 59 and a half. And I can withdraw all of this money completely tax-free because it's a Roth contribution, which means I'm paying taxes now so I can enjoy tax-free earnings later on. And you can also get my financial independence resources, including these spreadsheets for absolutely free by visiting firesidechat.com contact. You can also check out my Fireside Chat shop if you're looking to start your own YouTube channel and I have all of my books and equipment at firesidechat.com shopping. Now, take a look at the traditional portion of my TSP, which is all employer contributions. With a 10% annualized return, I should have over $120,000 by the time I retire early at age 45. My early retirement strategy is to gain access to this portion of my TSP. And because it's in pre-tax dollars, I'm gonna do what's called a five-year conversion ladder at $45,000 a year, because I'm not gonna be making any active income after 2032. So my marginal tax rate is gonna be at 10 or 12%, right? So when I convert $45,000 a year from traditional TSP to my Roth IRA, I'm gonna owe either 10 to 12% of $45,000 
to the IRS. Now, well, that's not exactly the effective tax rate, but we'll just call it $5,000. So the net conversion will be around $40,000. This money that I convert to my Roth IRA has a five-year waiting period because, uh, or before I can make any withdrawals. That's why it's called a five-year conversion ladder. So in the year 2037, I have access to the net conversion of $40,000 completely tax-free and penalty-free. You can check out this video about how I'm gonna tap into my TSP early tax-free, link in the description below. So based on my calculations, it will take me 15 years to maximize my TSP contributions to become a TSP millionaire. However, my early retirement age of 45 means that I only have nine years remaining in the workforce. Since I'm not looking to touch my Roth TSP until I turn 59 and a half, I'll be completely fine with just leaving the money where it is at almost half a million dollars in nine years because the compound earnings every year will eventually allow me to reach $1.8 million at 59 and a half. My wife and I are debt free except for our mortgage and we're gonna stay debt free for the rest of our lives. While we're maximizing our retirement contributions, we're gonna continue to enjoy our lives by traveling around the world. And if you wanna know more about how to invest in a TSP and retire early, be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.